Hello, how's it going all of you beautiful people around the world? My name is Ryan, aka Say It With Me, Blackbeard TCG. Hope you guys are all having an amazing day, and if not, hopefully I can make it a little bit better. Now look, you guys read the title. In today's video, we'll be talking about my top five cards in OP05. See what I did there? Top five, OP05. The top five cards that I'm absolutely hyped for. I can't wait to share you guys, with you guys my thoughts on this, but more importantly, I'm super, super excited to see what cards you guys are excited for. Down below in the comment section, whether it's the reveals or the leaks, tell me one card in OP05. It could be a leader, it could be a character, it could be an event, it could be a stage, it could be whatever. Give me one card in OP05 that you are extremely excited for. And without further ado, let's get into the top five. Uh, actually, I lied. There is a little bit of a do because 60, that's right, six zero, sixty 60% of you guys, are not subscribed. What are you talking? What are you guys doing? Daily uploads, a variety of content. You guys get to listen to your boy, and you're not subscribed. Go ahead, scroll down, click that subscribe button. Also, click the like button while you're there. Scroll on back up, and now let's get to it. So the first card that we have to talk about is Ulti. Now, to be fair, Ulti deserves a video in herself. I mean, first and foremost. You gotta look at, look look at the art, right? Like, let's just get that out there. Look at the art and look at the legs. Like, they, they knew what they were doing. They made her an SR. Her alt art looks dope too, but they made her an SR. And look at that. Look at the glare on the legs. I mean, goddamn. But we're not here to talk about the art. Although that is one of the reasons why I'm hyped. We have to talk about the card itself. It has 5,000 power, four costs, and it's a universal searcher. So her ability allows her to search the top three cards of your deck, add one of those cards to, her, to your hand, and then those remaining two cards, you can reorder them similar to how it's Perona or Doflamingo in blue. You can reorder them in the way that you'd like and place them back at the top or bottom of your deck. The reason why this is so special is because usually searchers, you take your card, you put the rest of the bottom, right? You're not seeing them for a while unless you cycle through your deck with multiple searchers. But with ulti, you can go ahead and put it back on the top because sometimes some of those cards that you sent to the bottom, you know, maybe you're running two elves, right? Say you're playing, um, say you're playing Zoro and you see your two rush Luffy's in your top five search with buggy and now you got to send those Luffy's to the bottom. Th that hurts, right? Now imagine that, but instead you get to add that one event and then you get to keep that Luffy on top, right? This is absolutely absurd, especially because this ability is so powerful and she still has counter. This card is amazing. I don't see why anybody that's playing a multicolor leader that includes blue would not run copies of this. Like, I don't, I don't see why you wouldn't run four. Like, obviously, you know, it's a searcher and things like that. It's probably, some builds probably might not have the space, but I would not knock anybody for finding space to get copies of Ulti in, if not just for her looks, but for the ability itself. Ulti is absolutely amazing and had to be on my list. Up next, let's switch over from a character to an event. We have to talk about Hound Blaze. Now this card, <laughs> let, let's just dive into it. You guys, you guys can find out once I really dive into it why this simple rare card is so high up on my list of cards I'm hyped for. Now, what does this do for two Dawn? You can increase one character or leader. So keep that in mind. It's not just leader, it's character or leader by three thousand this is very very powerful but that, it doesn't end there because usually that's just very powerful in itself right you know you look at fiery doll the value that you can get from that zoro's playing copies of those that's very powerful you think of this plus three thousand for the cost of two dawn you're getting a lot of value a lot of bang for your buck but the reason why this is so special is because after you do that you can go ahead and bottom deck a card that has a cost of two or less we are seeing more and more Zoro hate, more and more hate to these low cost bodies because of what Zoro is doing to the meta. And now blue has even more of that with this event. But let's dig a little bit deeper, right? Because Zoro is a problem, but there's other decks in the format. I don't know, maybe a Blurple Dofi that is playing the film engine with things like Nami. Or maybe Rebecca who have cards that stick on the board like Kairos, right? Oh, uh, yeah, I forgot. The lower cost three, right? Well, in comes Blue Black Sack. Yes, Blue Black Sack. It sounds extremely vulgar, but that is what I dubbed my deck over in the uh, simulator. Blue Black Sack. I think it sounds hilarious. What he does, in case you guys forgot, is he minuses the cost of one character by one when he attacks. Which means that Kairos 
is not safe because it can get hit by this. That means that Nami is not safe because it can get hit by this. There are cards that are three costs that are annoying that this can now hit in addition to making your leader, or if you're, if, if not, right, because you're probably gonna swing with your leader first, right? So you can pump up a character. Again, that's what makes this card great. It could be leader or character. You can go ahead, swing with your leader, minus one cost, activate this, bot deck something on the board, pump up one of your lower units, could be one of your searchers, I don't know what you're playing, right? Maybe you wanna pump up your brand new. And now you can swing with your brand new into your leader very early on while also controlling the board. This card is absolutely crazy, I love it, and it gets even nuttier when you talk about Marine Ford. Because now, for two Dawn, you get a 3k pump and you can bot deck a cost of four or less. This card, I mean, I don't need to harp on it anymore. If you guys can't see why this card is absolutely amazing and why you should be hyped for it, then I don't know what else to tell you because I sure am. Up next, we're gonna stick with the events, but I showed you guys a couple of blue cards. I don't want you guys to say that I'm too biased, you know? So we're gonna move over to purple. And I got to talk about Gamma Knife. Now, shout outs to, to, to you guys. Shout outs to you guys. You got the comment on the screen. I pinned it as well. Um, you know, I uploaded my, my Trafalgar Law list and I did not have round table in my list. What the hell was I thinking? I even commented, I'm like, how did I skip round table? Round table allows you to bot deck anything, right? You just use your four dawn, then you can send back three of that four dawn that you just used with round table with Law's ability just remove anything in the game. But now we also have access to Gamma Knife. Now what does Gamma Knife do? It minuses 5,000. You send one Dawn back, you get to minus 5,000, which means 8K cards are no longer safe even with just a single Gamma Knife. Now you can run Gamma Knife in conjunction with Round table, you can run Gamma Knife in con well, Round Table will take care of it of its uh, will take care of cards by itself, but I mean you can run both. Now in conjunction, you can run Gamma Knife with Brook, you can run Gamma Knife with Beppo, you can run Gamma Knife with Otama. There's many different tricks that you could do for very low dawn investment to just get rid of threats on the board. And Otama plus a Gamma Knife can basically remove most threats in the entire game. Law is going to be a problem. I'm already having fun with my red purple law list, but once this hits the sim, I'm gonna be doing even more intensive testing and maybe, just maybe, red purple law will become my favorite out of the three leaders because as you guys know, I'm, I'm simping pretty hard for, 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 uh, for red purple Luffy, for Blurpy. You know, I'm, I'm simping for Blurpy. But with that being said, this card looks absolutely amazing. And Law could dominate and become my favorite out of those three leaders. We'll have to see what Yusuke's kid is saying, because he's also getting support in this set. But Gamma Knife just stands out to me as a cost, uh, sorry, of a card with low cost that can just affect the game in so many ways. And oh, did I forget to mention it's trigger? Worst case nerf, it hits and trigger depending on your game state and all those things. You can go ahead and ramp one down. Pretty nice, right? So this is another card that I'm hyped for. So we talked about some blue cards. We talked about some purple cards. Let's go ahead and keep the trend going by talking about cards of other colors that I'm not biased towards, right? Let's go ahead and talk about Elza... What is it? Elzabello? Elzabella? Elizabello? Elzabello? I don't care. What I care about is that this card looks absolutely absurd in a vacuum, right? Again, th this card, we, we have to talk about it within context. If we just read it, it seems very strong. We do not know how great it will be in action because there's so much removal. We got people playing Jet Pistol. We have people playing Fire Fist. We have people playing Borsalino. We have people playing, um, what's that card called? Uh, Garp. Uh, we have people, that, you know, there's so much removal in the game where when it's 4 cost 5,000 power, this could be popped by anything and it needs to survive until the turn that it can attack. And even with the stage available, um, the stage for uh for rebecca that can only attack character cards but the value of this is that it gets double attack and 10k power so it's a double attack 15k body you couple you you couple that together with luffy and oh man along with the events that that rebecca has i mean the hey man the threat of leto is real that's all i'm gonna say actually i'm gonna keep saying more i think that this card is going to be extremely extremely fun extremely interesting i'm hyped for it not because i think it's broken not because i think that it's going to completely warp and destroy the meta no i just think 
It's going to be a really cool card to play with. It's going to be fun to get clips of content creators, myself or others, put them together of this card, putting in work. All of our friends over in Asia that upload gameplay videos, it'll be fun to take a look at those as well. And then also in addition to that, what if there's some big events that are going on that are streaming and we get to see it live on stream in a high pressure event? I don't know. Will it even be worth playing? Who knows? But hey, man, cards like this, how can you not be hyped for it? It, it just seems really cool and fits into the archetype very well. Having to bottom deck 20 cards is quite the feat. So again, I don't know how often you're going to be able to actually pull this off. But when you do, it is going to be a problem. And now, last but not least, we have to show Red a little bit of love. As you guys know, I'm not a big fan of Red. You know, I try to stay away from it. Um, not because I'm trying to be a, what's the word? Um, there's a word for it, you know, when, when people are trying to uh, not go along with everybody else, right? I'm not trying to be like one of those people, right? Um, but... I'm not a big fan of red, but I got I got to shout out Karasu, man. Let, let's just let's just stop beating on the bush. Let's talk about Karasu. Let's talk about it. Four cost, five thousand power on play. You can neg one thousand power for your opponent's character or leader. Yes, character or leader minus a thousand on play. Obviously, as long as your leader's revolutionary army. Thank goodness. However, the second ability when attacking, if this character has seven thousand power or more. Give up to one of your opponent's leaders or characters minus 1,000 for this turn. I think Karasu is going to be annoying. Again, we're looking at the cards in a vacuum. You don't know how it's actually going to play out yet. People need to play test it, get it on the sim, get it in real life in a couple weeks when it gets released over in Asia, have tournaments, have locals, all that good stuff. Let people have testing and we can see if this card really is on paper and in our mind, in our headcanon, how good it's going to be. But let's talk about that headcanon because you combo this with Bello Betty, which is the obvious synergy there. Being able to pump this up, you're going to be over 7,000. You can go ahead and neg your opponent by 1,000 power, neg their leader, and start swinging into them. And when you think about it, this card's value increases by one dawn for each character you have on board because it effectively gives every character on board, including your leader, so every character and your leader... 1,000 more power of value. So you get insane value from this card, not just from playing it, but from swinging with it with Bello Betty. But then if you think about Bello Betty, you know, you could just swing with the car to itself and that's fine by pumping it up, but Bello Betty can pump up more characters. So you can have other characters on board that are already pumped up. Your opponent's leader will already be 4,000 or if it's white beard, it could be down to 5,000 or red purple Luffy now that we have another 6k leader as well. They're going to be down. But the thing that's going to be so degenerate is if you have multiple Karasu on board. Because you can swing with one Karasu, minus 1,000, opponent's leader is 4,000. Swing with another Karasu, minus 1,000, the leader is now 3,000. Like, it's a... <laughs> hey, man. All I'm going to say... I mean, if you're in a situation where multiple Karasu is on the board and you're getting beat down by that at that point in the game by Bello Betty, then, you know, we'll, we'll have to see how, how consistent that's going to be. But... <laughs> How can you not be hyped for this? Like, I'm hype for the salt that this could potentially induce. Um, <laughs> I mean, Red just gets some some nutty stuff, man. I mean, whoever's developing the One Piece card game, Red is definitely their favorite color. I think we can all agree with that. Not even just, like, their favorite color because of the archetype. I mean, like, just in real life, like, they are probably a blood. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> no, but all jokes aside, aside, I think every single color got love this set. Um, except for, like, I don't know, yellow, uh, granted, yellow is probably my least favorite color out of everything in One Piece. I know that sounds so weird because I play Queen, but yellow is probably my least favorite color in the entire game. So I look at the yellow cards and I don't know, it doesn't do anything for me. It doesn't move me, right? Um, but I think every color got some nice support and I think that's all that matters. I'm going to give you guys a little something extra. I'm going to give you guys a little bonus one. And that bonus one I'm hyped for only purely based off the art and that is going to be the alternate art, Borsalino. I think, let, let me just put it like this. If you guys have been following me, if you guys have been watching me for a while, you know that Opio 1 Mihawk is my favorite card. Opio 1 alternate art Mihawk, let's, let's, let's specify it as that, is my favorite card in the entire game. I think that art is absolutely amazing. It is easily my favorite artwork in the entire game by far. Again, that's subjective, right? It's my personal opinion. This Borsalino has the potential to top it. If, and I say if because it depends, if the foiling on it is on point, it could be number one. Now, what do I mean by the foiling? If the light on his kick, if the light on his feet 
is more shiny than the rest of the foiling of the character. We already know it's an alter, so we know it's going to be flashy. We know it's going to look nice. But if the foiling is especially more shiny on the light on his kick, it has potential to, to be the number one for me easily. Because if we look at cards like, like Brand New and stuff like that, Brand New is just a basic rare. And you know that that little bald spot that, that has that glare, that has that shine? If you guys have Brand New from OPO3, go ahead and take it out of your binder or take it out of your bulk or take it out of your, your sleeve and your black deck. Go ahead and look at that. Look at the foiling on the card, and then look at that bald spot. Look, look at that little bald spot, the shine spot, and look how shiny that is in comparison to the rest of the card. Let's go ahead and get something like that times five, you know, make it even more shiny, and put that on the kick for Borsalino. This card is perfect. I, I need four copies of it. No debate, no conversation needed. Put it in my hand, money leaving my wallet. <laughs> but with that being said, guys... I'm super excited. Let me know one card that you're excited about in OPO5, be it from the reveals or the leaks. Let me know in the comment section below. I will catch you guys later. Peace.